Good morning, dear friends. Greetings to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God in his mercy and faithfulness has brought us to another day. This is a brand new day. And so there are challenges before us. There are responsibilities. There are duties to be fulfilled. And there are people to meet. And before we start doing all these things, let us be very quiet, silent in the presence of God, giving our ears and our attention to the voice of God's word through which we hear God's voice. Remember our meditation these three, four days have been about Elijah and his solitude. As found in the chapter 17 of 1 Kings, and this meditation is based on verses 2 to 7 or 6. God provided Elijah a place of solitude, a place of safety. Yesterday we saw that such solitude was necessary for his safety and for his soul's health. That he may be quiet in the presence of God, the all-powerful uh, creator God who sustains all his creations by the power of his word and for his body strength that solitude was necessary so that he may be renewed in his physical strength as well because the work ahead of him in the next few days are going to be very hard works And so we need to realize that before that hard work season into which we enter, we need to receive from God the needed guidance and the messages and the revelations and the, the, the anointing and the fullness of the Holy Spirit and our own relationship with this God must be well established and well assured before we venture out to doing things for God. And so the second thing to consider is his physical sustenance in his solitude. The promise God said to Elijah, you will drink of the brook, Cherith, and I have commanded ravens. And that means there were more than one raven involved in caring and in transporting the food consisting of bread and meat for his prophet Elijah. More than one raven were involved in this assignment to bring the food for God's servant. And you know, all the promises of God are in Christ, yes and amen. Second Corinthians chapter 1 verse 20. We read these words, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ, and so through him the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. And then in Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, Apostle Paul says, But my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. It does not say according to your worthiness or according to your wants. He said, according to his riches in glory, that means there is going to be abundant supplies, more than sufficient supplies for you when you depend on him. And uh, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, again the promise says, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and for godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. 
These are the promises that we can cling on to. And when we are in, uh, in fulfilling God's assignment for us, we need not to worry about our needs, which He will keep on providing. Because He knows His assignment requires anointing and the fullness of the Spirit and the power of God's presence and a new rever level of re revelation. All these things are needed. He knows and He keeps on providing it. So what was Elijah's experience after receiving these promises? His experience was absolutely true. God is faithful. The ravens brought to him meat and bread in the morning and in the evening. What an expression of God's concern for his prophet. Notice here, there is sufficient supply. Water, bread, and meat. That means perfect diet. These three things provide a person enough and sufficient strength and energy that is needed. Perfect diet. And the psalmist says in one of his psalms, the young lion do lack and go hungry at times. But they that wait upon the Lord shall not lack anything. Or they that trust the Lord shall not lack anything. Remember, David himself was a shepherd. And he was a loving, caring shepherd who cared for his sheep. He was willing to risk his life in order to save a single lamb or sheep. He would snatch them out of the mouth of lions and bears by jumping on them, risking his life. And David knew that for if a human shepherd who is loving and caring, how much more our heavenly father who sh sh pictured himself to be a good shepherd, how much more he will care and provide for his people who are trusting in him. Again notice, it was a regular supply, morning, evening. One day at a time. He has not provided for two or three days ahead. No. Why? God has promised our daily bread. And God has promised us our necessities, not luxuries. He has promised us our daily need. One day at a time. He, he is telling us, you know, even in the, in the prayer he taught, give us this day, this day, our daily bread. That is all. He, he says, tomorrow is not yours. So you need not to worry about tomorrow. You may be here, you may not be here. But today you are here. And therefore, today, I'm going to provide you all that you need. Not luxuries, but what we need to sustain our body, our soul, and spirit. Elijah would have preferred many other places to share it, to hide. But Sherith was the only place the ravens would bring his daily supply of food. And that, I close this with this question. Am I where God wants me to be? While there were many other places, Sherith was the only place where Elijah would be provided and fed and supplied 
and protected miraculously and sufficiently and daily. God has shown the ravens the, the, the route and the destination. And the ravens will carry the meat and the bread and carry them to that particular destination. The brook Sherith, that is the place. Whether Elijah will be there or not, the ravens will land up there with the food. If Elijah is not there, that is not raven's fault, God's fault, that is Elijah's fault. And my friends, many times we wonder why God is not providing my need. Sometimes it is good for us to ask this question, am I where God wants me to be? Make sure that before you land anywhere, you don't choose your own place. Listen to God. And where God sends you, you don't need to depend on anybody for your support. But you can trust God. He will provide you, protect you, and He will provide your daily need. Don't be greedy. And don't seek after luxuries. God has promised to take care of your necessities. May the Lord grant you grace to be where God wants you to be and be prosperous there. Be happy. And I pray that you will fulfill God's plan and purposes for your life. Amen. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person who has been listening to these meditations. I pray that the Spirit of God will continue to grant to them a higher level of revelation as they continue to meditate on these truths. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, my friends. This is a great day. Enjoy. Amen.